Roger Marshall's race starts well, but it's to be short-lived. As he starts to climb up the mountain section, just over halfway round the first lap, his race is run. Third fastest in practice, his efforts have been for nothing. I missed a gear on the mountain and it's bent a valve, so the engine's gone right off. Yeah, if I'd have carried on it, it'd have wrecked the engine. So, it's a week of effort, and then I go out first lap of the race, very disappointed. Could cry. Suzuki have some consolation. Mick Grant starts sensationally by setting a new record on the opening lap. Dunlop is second, holding a slender lead over teammate Ron Haslam. Gooseneck signalling station, Carol waits anxiously for Mick to appear. When the actual race is on, I'm thinking, oh, I hope everything goes all right. It doesn't break down or fall off. And that sort of the other half of me saying, get your finger out and get on with it, you know. It's strange, really. I don't want him to do anything silly, but I want him to win. The first refuelling stop, every second counts. Races can be won or lost in the pits. Haslam has moved into second place and is cutting into Grant's lead. Dunlop holds a steady third. After four laps, Grant has developed front brake trouble. Can he hold off the determined Ron Haslam for another two laps? On lap five, the question is answered. However, it's not the brake, but ignition failure that finally finishes Grant's chances of another TT victory. Coming up May Hill, just out of Parliament Square, that just started a real big cracking and banging job. When did it happen? Can't bring it out, it's just as dead as a dodo. Mick's misfortunes leave Ron Haslam in a comfortable first place. Dunlop holds on to second. He's worked hard on an ailing bike, down on power and road holding, but good enough for a Honda 1-2. For the mechanics, it's down tools. There's nothing more they can do. And for Shell, there's the knowledge that their oil has withstood the test and brought home a winner.